Hey guys, welcome back. Today in the Untidy Artist, we are making pom-pom fairy wands. I absolutely love these big, fluffy, bohemian, whimsical looking pom-poms. I decided to make them into wands for my nieces for Easter, and I thought it would be fun to show you all how I made these. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And if you enjoy this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up and stick around to the end to see some other variations. Let's grab some supplies and get started. My first tip with making these giant pom-poms is to have a really good pair of scissors. You want them to be really sharp and make sure that you only use them for sewing. The star of our big fluffy pom-poms is going to be this acrylic chunky yarn. I got this at Michael's, I'll put a link below, and this is so soft, it's gonna help give us that big, full, fluffy look to our pom-poms. Then I have two just regular sized um, yarns. I really like the texture and the darker pink one and the variation in the color. And then what you want to go for is different textures. Um, I like to pick out, this is a, a bakery um, twine that has some gold in it. And then this iridescent yarn. Um, I really wanted to just get a lot of different texture and sparkle in my pom-poms. I have some dowels that I will be using to make them into wands. I've got some gold acrylic paint. This part is optional. You can leave the dowels plain, a paintbrush, and then I've got some cute just ribbon and lace to kind of tie around it. I've got a cereal box that we'll be using to make our pattern. And then I'm using a paper cutter. You can use normal scissors. Just make sure they're not the same scissors you're using to cut your pom-pom. And I have a ruler. And then of course I have my trusty glue gun set on low. Okay, let's get started. So I've put down a piece of parchment paper. I've got my paintbrush and I'm going to put my paint directly on my parchment paper. And I'm going to give my dowel a nice coat of paint. Now you can see I'm holding it at one end. The end I'm holding it on, we won't be painting, but you do want to make sure that you get the other end. Make sure you get that painted on the bottom and you're just going to give the dowel a nice even coat of paint. I think it would be fun to play around with different colors for the dowels. You could also once again leave them plain if you want to skip this step. So you can see once again I've got I'm holding on to one end. I don't paint that end because that's the part we'll be putting into the pom-pom and then I go back and give them all another coat of paint. Okay, now we're going to grab our cereal box and I'm just using a piece of the box. I'm going to straighten up one of the edges with my paper cutter so I can get a nice even pattern and then I'm cutting it in half and I don't do the greatest job getting it perfectly even, but these pom-poms are going to be four inches in diameter. So we are going to go ahead and measure to four inches. So it's going to be four inches uh, in width and then length, it's going to be about six inches. The most important measurement is that four inches because it's going to give us the four inch round pom-pom, which is perfect for the dowels. Okay, so once I've got my first pattern cut out, I'm going to go ahead and trace it onto another piece of cardboard. Go ahead and cut that out. So I've got two pieces that are exactly four inches wide. Once again, the length doesn't matter as much. You just want to make sure that it's longer than four inches. Then I'm going to cut a half inch right out of the center of our pom-pom. This is where we're going to put a little slit for us to be able to tie our pom-pom evenly. So I measured in at two inches, which is exactly in half, and then I measured a quarter inch on each side. We're just going to go ahead and cut this out, and this gives us our own handmade pom-pom maker. And the nice thing about spending extra time getting these measurements right is it's going to make trimming up your pom-pom at the end a lot easier. And this is also reusable. So if you make one really good pattern, you can keep going back and using it. Now I'm going to grab a piece of my regular sized yarn and I went a little crazy here and measured it way too long. You need about 24 inches and we're gonna set this aside. We'll be using this to tie our pom-pom together. Because we're using so many different types of yarn, one tip I have, I got these buckets from the dollar store and I put about three of them on the floor and put a couple uh, kinds of yarn in each one so they don't get all tangled up. Okay, so I've got my big acrylic yarn and my two regular sized yarns. I'm going to grab um, the four smaller uh, threads and yarns and we are gonna start wrapping this around our pattern. So I'm kind of holding it in place. You don't wanna wrap it too tight and I wrap it around three times and make sure that my pattern is nice and straight. And then we're gonna wrap it around one more time. So we've gone around four times, but keep in mind there are seven different kinds of yarn. 
So if we were using a single strand of yarn, it would be like we had gone around 28 times. Then I'm going to gently slide the yarn down. You don't want to slide it off of your pattern. And you're going to take that piece that you set aside and slip it through the hole. And we are going to tie our pom-pom off. Our pom-pom isn't finished, but I have found that when you're using the thicker, chunkier yarn, they fall apart really easy. And we want our pom-pom to not fall apart, to stay together really nicely. So I tie a double knot on one side and then I push that yarn through and I tie it again on the other side. So by tying it in the middle, um, after we've gone around four times, it's gonna help secure that pom-pom. Now I'm going to flip it so both of my ends are facing up. So this is where we started, and I'm going to go around four more times. You wanna be careful with those two pieces of the thread that you're using to tie the center that they don't get tangled into your pom-pom. So I make sure those stay on the side and I wrap around four more times. And once I've gotten back up to the top, I'm going to tie a double knot on the one side, attaching that to the middle of our pom-pom. And then I flip it over and I do the same thing on the other side. This, I, I've made a lot of these and I found that by securing it halfway through and then really making it secure at the end, your pom-pom isn't gonna fall apart. So after I've tied it on both sides, I'm actually gonna tie it again on both sides. And then what I'm going to do is grab my scissors and because we have, we're gonna cut off that little end. And then because we have two pieces of the cardboard, we're going to be able to slide the scissors in between those two pieces of cardboard and cut it right at the end. So you wanna make sure during this whole time that your yarn isn't coming off your pattern. So I slide my scissors in there and just cut it. This is also why you don't want to wrap too tightly. If you wrap your yarn too tightly, it'll be hard to cut that at the end. And also make sure that you're not cutting those pieces that you use to tie the center because we'll want those to help us fluff our pom-pom. Then I give it a good shake and you can see we've got the start of our pom-pom. Now I kind of think this is the fun part. We're gonna go through and clean it up. So what I like to do is I fluff it up a little bit, give it a good shake, and then I'm going to flatten my pom-pom down evenly and I'm going to just trim all of the crazy pieces that are sticking out. If you'd like, you could cut out a four inch uh, circle and lay that on top of your pom-pom and use that as a guide. But because we um, had such a good pattern, you really don't end up cutting off tons and tons. And you can kind of just cut off the scraggly pieces that are sticking out. Then I'll give my pom-pom a good shake. I'll flatten it down again in a different direction. So I'll lay my pom-pom on the side and I'm going to trim off those ends again. And this is strangely satisfying. I love doing this. And you wanna make sure you don't cut off those two ends we want to have those to continue shaking our pom-pom and helping us get it the right shape. And then just keep giving it a haircut. So I keep doing that until I'm happy with the shape of the pom-pom. One drawback to this yarn is it does get everywhere. I have <laughs> these little fibers in my eyelashes, all over my craft room, all over my clothes, but um, they're so soft and so fun, it's totally worth it. So keep trimming it up. Just going around it, shaking it. And once you're happy with the shape, we're going to lay it down. So you can see we have this beautiful fluffy pom-pom. I actually like to massage that acrylic yarn a little bit to help it, help it fluff up more. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to attach our dowel. Now we don't wanna put it where the knot was because if you try and stick the dowel in where the knot is, it's going to be lopsided and you're not going to have um, a fairy wand that stands up straight. So I turn it to its side and I find the center. And so I'm taking the end that doesn't have the glue on it. I'm putting some glue right in the center of the pom-pom, right on the end of my dowel, on that end we didn't paint. And then I'm going to stick it right in the center and I'm gonna hold it upright until that glue sets. Once it has set, I'm gonna go give it one last haircut and I'm gonna cut off those two pieces that we used to tie the center. 
And you can keep cleaning it up if you like. I'll kind of hold it up and fluff it a little bit more and see if there are any crazy pieces poking out. One thing I love about these pom-poms is that they are supposed to be really whimsical. And with the different types of thread and yarn, you really get this fun look. And so they don't need to be exactly perfect. Then I'm going to grab my different ribbons that we'll be using. I love this flower lace. Um, what I do with this is I'll take a small dab of glue and I wrap it. I, I put the lace behind my dowel and then wrap it around. Tying, trying to tie this big lace is really bulky and it's easier if you just glue it in place. Then I'm taking those three other ribbons and I'm going to tie those around my dowel. I also think a strip of tulle would be really pretty instead of using the lace. So once I have it in a double knot, I'm going to grab my glue gun and we're going to add a small dab of glue right underneath the knot to secure it in place. And you can have so much fun with experimenting with different types of ribbon. If you have leftover ribbon from different projects, this is a great way to use it up. And I tried to pick colors that would complement the sparkle and the iridescent uh, parts of our pom-pom. Now for some fun variations. So with the first one, I used a big chunky yarn. Instead of using that big chunky yarn, we're going to substitute three regular um, pieces of yarn. Um, but I once again picked out some that have, one has some gold in it. Uh, the other one has a lot of texture. It's almost like a chenille. And instead of using the big chunky yarn, I used three other smaller yarns and got a completely different look for my pom-pom. I kind of feel like this looks more like a firecracker where the other pom-pom is a lot softer. I think they're both really fun. Which one do you guys like? Let me know in the comments below. Do you like the softer, fluffier one or the one that's a little bit more like a firecracker? Here's a peach and pink version that I did that I think is so darling. And then you can start playing around with the colors. So in this one, I used a turquoise and a purple. I think it turned out so pretty. Um, I did a plain purple one. I kind of matched these up to my niece's different personalities and I had a blast making these. I think these would be so fun for a birthday party. You could use them as centerpieces. You could use them as favors and send each little girl home with one. I just have fallen madly in love with these pom-pom fairy wands and I wish my girls were still small enough to appreciate them. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do. That would be amazing. And if you'd like to be the first to know when I come out with a new video, you can click on that bell icon. You guys are amazing. If you're feeling social, go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I love to see your creations. You can share them with me with the hashtag untidy artist. Uh, thanks for all of your sweet comments and all of your support. I appreciate you all so much and we'll see you next time.